from Dance and Bee Equipment. It's getting to be that time where we're going to want to do some spring treatments for our mites. One of our more popular ones is Apivar, and we often get a lot of questions about Apivar treatments. So I'm going to go through today some of the questions and answers uh, regarding Apivar, how to treat, and what to do. All right. So one of our questions always is, can you use it with honey supers on? No. This kind of um, treatment has an active ingredient called Amitraz and you do not want to use it with your honey supers on. So this is always either before you put your supers on or after you take your supers off. So you want to do it in the spring or in the fall. Okay. Um, the treatment period is usually six to eight weeks. You want to follow, I'm going to say first, always make sure you read the instructions on the packages of any mite treatment or any treatment that you use. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. That is going to give you the best results for the Apivar or any mite treatment. Okay, so another question we're always asked, um, what is the best way to prevent resistance? So there's a lot of um, comments out there that Apivar, they're starting to show some resistance. Now I think that sometimes resistance and efficacy are used interchangeably. We want to make sure that you use Apivar in the right way so that it's most effective for mites. If you're not using it properly, it might affect the efficacy, but it doesn't necessarily mean resistance to the Apivar. So that what we're here today to do is make sure that you're using it in the proper way for the highest efficacy for mite treatment, okay? Um, so again, Apivar is gonna be part of your integrated pest management system. So you want to use it in conjunction with other uh, methods of mite treatment, whether it's formic acid, oxalic acid, other chemicals that don't have amitraz, because this is an amitraz treatment, uh, thymol based chemical uh, treatments, different treatments. So you want to rotate. So that's going to be the best way to make sure that your apivar and any mite treatment is uh, as effective as possible. Okay. Again, we always encourage you to monitor and monitor your mites. Make sure you're doing your mite counts in the spring, uh, going into the summer, you know, you want to check on your mites to check your numbers to see how effective your treatments are going to be going into the fall. You don't necessarily just want to treat and go because you just never know, okay? Um, it is suggested that you renew your wax, so you're going to rotate your brood frames uh, every so often, every few years or so, just to reduce the residue that's in, uh, in your frames, in your wax and in the brood. The reason being is that just again might reduce the efficacy if it's still in the in the wax. Okay. So another question that we get asked is does the temperature during treatment affect the use of apivar? The short answer is no. Apivar is good for any treatment, any temperature. Uh, you want it or usually around 10 degrees because you want to be able to get into your colonies. Okay. One other thing that you want to make sure is that you have bees, okay? So it's not going to be effective if you don't have enough bees because what they do is a contact treatment. They need to walk all over the, the strips in order to spread it around. So you not only need to have your bees, but they can't just be in a cluster because they're not moving around. You want them to move around to spread it to the different parts of your, their colony. So if you're doing it and it's fairly cold, they're obviously not going to be moving around. Once the spring comes, they start moving around it's a lot more effective. They're spreading it to each other and to around for the mites. Um, another thing that can encourage the movement is feed. So you can feed the sugar syrup, feed patties. That will help them because the more that they feed, the more active that they are going to be. And then they can move around and spread the, uh, the mite treatment around, okay? Another common question we get is what happens if you leave the strips in all winter. We don't suggest you leave the strips in all winter because this can build up in the wax. It builds residue. It can affect the efficacy of it because it could then build up resistance the longer that it's in, this, in the colony. It's just not as effective as if you just do it for the uh, six to eight weeks of recommended treatment. This is where the temperatures do come in because when you treat for the fall, you need to take into account that you can open up your colony again to take those strips out. In the spring, it's not so uh, dire because you know it's getting warmer, so you want to time it so that you can put your honey supers on. In the fall, if you use it in the fall, you want to make sure that you have time to get into that colony to take your strips out. 
okay? So this is all plan part of planning your integrated pest management. You make a plan starting now so that you know when you're gonna do what, so you can establish what kind of treatments you're gonna do, okay? Another question that we are often asked is how does apivar affect the bees and the queen? Is there evidence that it causes any queens to slow down egg laying? Again, no. There is no known effects and there's no proof that this affects the queen or the egg laying in any way. This is just simply a contact treatment. They need to walk around and there's nothing that will affect the queen or the egg laying. How long does amitraz remain in the colony once the strips are pulled? The answer is once the strips are pulled, it does not remain in the colony for very long. So the manufacturer's recommendations is to wait two weeks, 14 days before you add your honey supers. By then, any residue amitraz is gone from the colony. Um, it's not gonna be spread around by the bees anymore. It's, again, the contact is on the strips, okay? So it degrades quickly once uh, the strips are taken out of the colony. There is a common question that we get that they've done the treatments and there's still so many mites in their colonies. If you still have a lot of mites after you've done your treatment, you do your follow-up count, there are some questions that you wanna ask before automatically going to the fact that Apivar is mite resistant, or the mites are resistant to the Apivar. Uh, first question, you wanna ask, were my colony, what were my colonies like? So you wanna make sure that you know what's going on in your colony whether they were strong or they were weak, what kind, what's going on in your colony. Was there a lot of brood, a large harvest, and therefore probably a lot of varroa mites? So if you have a lot of brood that hasn't hatched out yet, I know we have this is, a, is for three, uh, two to three brood cycles, but you want to make sure that if there is a large brood, that's gonna affect, because as those brood hatch, all of those mites are gonna come out again. So this is going to affect how it looks when the mites are coming out. Okay, it may indicate that you need a second treatment just because there's been that many mites in there from the beginning. Uh, what were the results of my counts before, uh, during and after your management? So you might wanna put like a sticky board to see how many mites are dropping daily. You wanna make sure you have your mite count before and your mite count, count uh, after, because then you can actually see what the efficacy of the apivar and your other treatments are, okay? Um, are there any biomechanical actions taken during the year to reduce the infestation? So you want to make sure that you're treating throughout the year, that you're not just doing it once or twice a year. This is something um, that is part, again, of your integrated pest management system, okay? Uh, when did I start managing and applying my treatments? Again, this is part of all of your planning for integrated pest management. If you didn't treat in the spring, you didn't treat in the fall, in the summer, but you treated in the fall, this is going to affect your mite counts and how many, how you go into winter and how effective one treatment is. Okay, so again, you want to integrate every, all your kinds of pest management that you can do to help manage your mite counts. Okay, um, and then has there been a reinfestation from another apiary or another colony that's beside it? So maybe one colony is doing well and has very little mites, but the one beside it has a huge amount of mites. Those mites are going to come over from uh, the colony beside it. So that's another thing that you have to keep an eye on is what's going on with neighboring apiaries and neighboring colonies besides yours. And then what was your treatment history for the previous year? What did you do the previous year? What mite treatments did you use? And what were your numbers? What was the weather like? There's so many different factors that you need to take into account for this stuff, okay? Another question we get asked and is a concern for a lot of us that want to make sure that these chemicals don't end up in our landfills and stuff, is should the strips be disposed of as hazardous waste and how does it affect the water, uh, the landfills and the water table, okay? So we want to dispose, you can dispose of these in sanitary landfills um, or by incineration. So amitraz is a molecule that is highly unstable in the environment and degrades when it comes in contact with air but there is um, a link between amitraz and toxicity in the uh, aquatic system in the water table. So what we're gonna do if there's interest at Dancing Bee Equipment, we are going to look into uh, disposal of the um, apivar and if we have, can bring them in and then we can look into taking them out. So this is something that you should you know, try to dispose of as hazardous waste if you can. Um, be very careful, mindful of, of things like that, but they can cause some issues. But generally speaking, it degrades very quickly and there's no problem just uh, disposing of it 
uh, very little problem disposing it in uh, regular landfills, but the best way to do it is through incineration, okay? But you can check your specific uh, bylaws and regulations uh, in local of where you are, but you may be able to find places that can take this to dispose of it properly. Finally, we do get asked if there's unused strips, how long can they be stored uh, if once you've opened the package and how long they're good for once the package has been opened. So what you want to do is uh, we always encourage that you try to use all of the strips at the same like really quickly um, it's once you open it so you want to get the amount that you're going to be able to use so this is our four pack we have a 12 pack and then there's also a 60 pack so you want to be able to use them for that season's treatment if you're going to use it in the spring um, it and you open it and you have some left over and you want to use it for the next spring chances are that's not going to be effective you want to be able to use it within a few months of opening the container in this contain in this foil you want to make sure you can open it uh, very carefully so you can seal it again and then you're good to go for a few months anyway but the longer that it's left open the less effective it's going to be so that's also part of how if your mite treatments didn't seem to work was this already an open container you, you want to make sure that it's a very a sealed fresh container okay another question that we get asked is can you freeze it to make it la last longer and from the manufacturer no you don't want to freeze these there has been um, very little study as to how that's going to affect the camp the amitraz and how the efficacy of the um, apivar so you want to cool, uh, store it in a cool dark place but do not freeze them okay uh, keep them sealed keep them cool dark place but not frozen is the best way to store these those were a few of the questions that we get asked from for uh, apivar and how to treat and use your apivar strips there i'm going to post some more information if you want to read some more detailed information regarding uh, some of the studies and and everything else for that for apivar remember you want to keep your integrated pest management in uh, in mind so for right now to apply these in the spring again six to eight week treatment so if you want to put your honey supers on end of may early june depending on on your situation you want to go back six six to eight weeks from that so right now it's a little early to put your mite treatments on the strips um, but there are other methods that you can do but remember to keep counting your mites monitor and implement your integrated pest management system if you have any questions you can give us a call here at dance and be equipment send us an email we're always here to help thanks and have a great day Thank you.